I have a tendency to walk. It's going to be hard to just stick to this. Um, I want to start with a question. Uh, do you know how many students are there in India who are enrolled in higher education institutions? Total number of students enrolled in higher education institutions. Anyone wants to take a guess? India is a country of 140 crore people. How many are in colleges right now? Two lakhs? No. Two crores, a little bit less. Let's go higher. A little bit lower. It's approximately five crores. How many of these five crores actually graduate every year? How many enter the workforce every year? Any, any guesses? No, how many graduate every year out of those five crore? 20%, yes. So that would be approximately one crore. All right. So one crore students graduate colleges, business schools, PhD programs every year. Out of these one crore students, how many are engineers? All? No. 20 lakhs? No. No. It's just 10 lakhs. How many MBAs? 5, 10? No. 7? No. It's just 2 lakhs. Just 2 lakhs. How many graduate from law schools? No. No. Just 40,000. How many graduate from medical colleges? MBBS, MD? 50,000, yes, that's correct. Uh, and if you combine the rest of the programs like fashion, design, etc., that comes down to 15 lakhs. So engineering plus business plus all of the other ones, 15 lakhs. There's still 85 lakhs remaining. What do they study? BBA, and? BBA, BCom, and? BA. BA. Exactly, that's 85% of students who graduate every year study either BBA, BCom, or BA. Now the sucker punch comes. How many of these 85 lakh students who graduate from a BBA, BCom, or a BA program get a job that pays them a salary of 5 lakh rupees or more? What is that number? <laughs> exactly. No, it's 12,000. You know what percent is that? That's 0.14%. 0.14%. That's the condition of the education system in India today. That 85 lakh students who study BCom, BBA, and BA programs are hardly able to get jobs that can sustain them a lifestyle. Now, you know, we all complain about the education system, and I'm complaining about it too. Uh, but what is the solution? There are many solutions that are thrown around. There are many theories that are expounded. But I truly believe that the solution lies right in front of us. And you might know the answer to this question. Which discipline or which department in a university or in a college has the highest rate of placements, has the highest rate of career outcomes being valuable? Can anyone think of what discipline that is? Can anyone guess? Finance, no. Consulting, no. Engineering, not even close, actually. HR, HR no. <laughs> IT, no. Marketing, finance, no. Think a little bit deeper. I'll give you a minute. Soft skills, sure, but that's not the top one. There's a department in almost all universities across the country, across the world, and especially in India, that department graduates the best graduates. What is that department? Mm-mm. It's very simple. It's actually medicine. Our doctors, our doctors who graduate from our MBBS programs or MD programs are perhaps the best in the world. If you go to the United Kingdom today, there is a service called NHS, National Health Services. Almost every fourth doctor in the NHS is actually an Indian. Not an Indian who studied in the UK, but an Indian who studied in India. That's how valued our doctors are. Why do you think that our medical colleges do such a good job? I thought about this question quite a bit. Why is it that our engineering colleges fail us? Why is it that a long tail of even commerce colleges, not talking about HR here, uh, but you know, in smaller cities, uh, we have a lot of colleges that fail students. Uh, but medical colleges across the board, whether they're in Delhi or Nagpur or Porbandar, do a great job of placements. There are four reasons I came up with, and I'd like to share all those four reasons with you. The first one, 
is that a medical college is always situated right next to, if not inside, a medical hospital. The students who are studying in a medical college, they are actually interacting with their patients on a daily basis and not solving hypothetical numericals on a daily basis. They actually see the fruits of their labor on a daily basis. What they study, they actually get to apply. I don't remember the last time I used DYDX. I studied in engineering school. I studied calculus. I studied vernier calipers. I studied all of those things. But I never got to apply them in real life. But in a medical college, whatever students learn, they get to apply. Because of that, they're actually motivated to learn even more. Because of that, they actually do a lot of self-study. Because of that, they're able to graduate in a way that actually makes them employable. So that's very straightforward reason number one. Reason number two is that in a medical college, they always teach to the problem and not to the tool. Let me explain what that means with a very simple example. If you want to teach somebody how a refrigerator works, would you give them a broken refrigerator and ask them to fix? Or would you teach them how to use a screwdriver? It's very simple. You'll give them a refrigerator that's broken and they'll fix it. And that's how they learn. If you start with a screwdriver and teach them how a screwdriver works and how to use it, you've already lost that student. The motivation is already gone. The student is like, I mean, like, why am I using a screwdriver? And that's where the DYDX comes back into the picture. We learned DYDX. That was a tool. But we never learned how to use that tool to solve a problem. Heck, we didn't even know what the problem was. Does anyone know what calculus is being used for in daily lives? Probably not. I also mentioned vernier caliper. I remember failing a test in my class 12 physics where I had to figure out how to use a vernier caliper. But they never told us why that vernier caliper will be used or what problem I will solve by that vernier caliper. So in medical colleges, they teach to the problem and not to the tool. And I think that's one very important thing that they do that makes their graduates more employable. The third part is even more interesting. In a medical college, students have to do OPD from day one. Right from year one or year two latest, they have to start seeing their patients in real life. They have to do OPD from day one. What they learn in the morning, they get to apply in the evening right away, without any delay. In our engineering schools, students have to wait four years before they go to a company. And by that time, guess what's happened? They've forgotten everything that they learned in year one. No one remembers anything for four years. Similar is the case with a lot of our MBA programs as well. They learn accounting in term one, which is the most important course. And by the time they reach the company, they've forgotten the basics of accounting principles. The fourth thing which I believe makes medical colleges very good at what they do is that almost 50 to 60% of their professors, their teachers, are actually real doctors. Most of the courses in a medical college are co-taught between a practicing doctor and a full-time faculty. The faculty brings in the rigor, the doctor brings in the case studies. That keeps the students always on their toes. That keeps the classroom always very updated. That keeps the classroom always very engaged when there is this sort of a duopoly of people teaching. So these are the four reasons I believe that medical colleges do a very good job. And these are not rocket science in any way. These are not rocket science in any way. All of these four principles, all of these four aspects can be brought into our other colleges as well. We did a small experiment at Masters Union, which is the college that I founded a couple of years ago. We did an experiment where instead of having pure play faculty, we had each course be taught by a practicing MD, CEO, CXO as well. What that did was very interesting. Students were so inspired to have a real practicing CEO in the class that students learned by themselves just to impress that CEO. I never had to work on motivation. The attendance was almost 100% in each class that the CEO was there. And by the way, the attendance is not compulsory at Master's Union. 
can you guess what is the percentage of attendance at a normal government college? It's 23% exactly. It's just 23%. And that's because the classes are not as engaging as they should be. We tried another experiment at Master's Union. Instead of teaching courses, classes, exams, lectures, slides, all of that, we instead asked students that in each term you build a business. So in term one, everyone builds a dropshipping e-commerce business with zero investment. In term two, everyone builds a YouTube page and tries to monetize it with zero investment. In term three, everyone designs a layer two blockchain protocol, again with zero investment. In term four, all of the students actually curate a menu on Zomato and run their own cloud kitchens, again with zero investment. As they do these businesses, as they build these businesses from zero to one, they learn more than any class could have ever taught them. The results of this training we saw after just the first year of our existence, when our first batch graduated, we were able to get companies on board that were otherwise only going to an IIM Ahmedabad or an ISP or a Wharton or a Stanford. We were able to bring these companies to come to campus and say, hey, listen, would you like to recruit our students? And guess what? All of our students were able to crack all of those jobs that otherwise were only kept for those legacy institutions. That was a dipstick test we ran to see whether our curriculum works, and it did. And guess what? The investment required to run this institution, which currently graduates around 200 students a year, was basically next to nothing. It was basically next to nothing. It, it costed us less than the bill of gardeners in some of the IMs. So that's what we found out through our experiment. My hope is that all of the business schools in India, all of the engineering schools in India, all of the journalism schools in India, all of the computer science schools in India, can they take a leaf from this book? Can they be inspired by this method of teaching and learning that has existed in India since time immemorial? It's nothing new. Can they take a leaf from this book and apply those learnings to their own colleges? So imagine a mechanical engineering school, which is situ situated right next to the Maruti factory. Can you imagine a computer science school which is situated perhaps in the middle of the electronic city in Hyderabad? Can you imagine perhaps a business school that is situated not too far from BKC? That's really the future of education that I envision. Finally, I want to leave you with one parable that comes to my mind all the time. And this is not specific to India. Across the world, Education has become about there being a jug of syllabus and a student being a cup of water. And it's always been about you know, taking that jug of syllabus and filling that student cup with syllabus. I don't think that's what education should be. In my humble opinion, education should be about the student being a candle and for us to light that candle. That would be true education. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Pratamithil.